Good morning, YouTube. It's Sunday here, um, and it's Father's Day. So glad you guys could join me this morning. Um, hope you guys are looking for a, a, a simple cook today. It's, it, I always say simple. I mean, it's a rib cook. Um, I've done many rib cooks on my channel before. And if you are not interested in seeing another one of my rib cooks, because I'm not really doing anything super special with these ribs, feel free to exit out the video, guys. Um, but I just wanted to bring a special rib cook today on Father's Day because I enjoy cooking ribs. I love cooking ribs, and I love being a dad. So I just figured today, you know, I'll bring you guys a little video. Um, kind of a shout out there to all the fathers out there. Um, maybe there's some dads out there thinking about doing some ribs, and they don't really know where to start, or they don't know how to do them. So just thought I would uh, come out and just do a little video today. Um, this video is going to be a little shorter. I'm going to really try to cut out a lot. Um, we, we already trimmed the ribs. We're not showing any trimming, any of that. That's already been done. I've seasoned them. They've been in the fridge overnight, guys. So I really hope you guys will stick in here today with me, man. Come back. We're going to show you how we got this grill set up. We're going to show you how, how we're going to get these ribs on this grill today. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So stay tuned, guys. Let's get cooking. As promised i wanted to show you guys my setup on this grill today so on this grill what we're doing is a snake method some of you guys might be real familiar with this but on these ribs it just does such a good job we're doing three two one ribs today we've got a st louis style rib that we're doing and so i said let's do a snake let's let's do this setup for snake because i've had such good success with it on this weber performer deluxe um the ribs come out so good so smoky so delicious and what I'm going to end up doing, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to end up throwing me some wood chunks on the top here. Um, I have not done that yet. They're not up there yet. But uh, when we get back to out here to cook, they'll be in here. So um, I'm going to light this thing up. But right now what we're doing is we're using a BMB. Um, I usually do use Kingsford. Uh, but, you know, I went to Academy and this stuff was pretty reasonably priced around Memorial Day. So I said, hey, let's try it out. You know, it was a better price than the Kingsford. So that's basically why I have it. And... Just real excited, man. I, if you guys have seen any of my other videos about this little grill right here, go check them out, man. I don't know. I don't know if you have seen them, but if you haven't seen them, go check them out about the Weber Performer Deluxe. This loving this grill, guys. I just really, really love this grill. Um, been, had only I've only had it like two months, and I have cooked a lot of stuff on it so far. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get going on this, guys. I'm not gonna burn any more time on this, but basically doing this snake method today. And the idea is that you light it here. And it's just a slow smoke all the way around. So um, you usually get about six to seven hours out of this, and that's what I need. Sometimes you'll get eight hours. It just depends. Um, depends on the weather. Depends on the elements, how it smokes, how quick it's catching, and all that good stuff. So um, if you haven't tried this in your kettle, try this. I've done pork butts with this method. I've done ribs with this method. Um, it, they just come out really good, man. I mean, everything I've cooked so far on it has come out really good with this method. Um, there's other tools that you can buy out there like the slow and sear um, from adrenaline barbecue that would help you do this but if you don't have that this is a great alternative i want the slow and sear i don't have it yet but this is a great alternative if you don't have those for a slow smoke so all right guys we're gonna get inside i'm gonna show you guys these ribs that we got seasoned up and we're gonna get going today on this cook we're gonna cook at about 250 to 275 today that's what we're shooting for um, i just want to give you guys all the specifics before we get in there and start doing these ribs but um yeah, we're doing three, two, one method. We're going to th do three hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped, and then one back on the grill unwrapped. Um, sometimes that works for me. Sometimes I have to go longer than three, two, one. So uh, we'll see how this goes today, guys. All right, guys. Happy to be here with you on Father's Day. Glad you're tuning in to my channel. And we'll be back in just a minute. Let's get cooking in there at the counter, man. Let's get these ribs out and let's see what we got going. All right, guys. Welcome back. Uh, we got our grill up the temp. I got it at about 2.30 right now. It took me a while to get my grill up. So it's real sunny out here right now. So uh, it's getting a little hot out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to speed through this part of the video a little bit. But anyways, these are the ribs. 
This is what they look like. Like I said, these were in the fridge over for 24 hours. Well, not quite 24 hours. They're probably about more like 12 hours. Um, we did them late, late, actually late this morning. Um, but this is the season that we're using today. I told you guys earlier it was going to be a Traeger season. I believe I mentioned that earlier in the video. Um, this is an apple honey rub. Love honey on my ribs. We usually put that on our ribs when we when we go to wrap them. So really kind of pumped about this, hoping that this is some good stuff. And all I did, man, was I just put this mustard on them. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos before, you've seen me use this as a glue, as a binder. This is what I used to put on my ribs before I put the seasoning on. So if you've never seen any videos, you've never done ribs before, this is my glue. I put this on my ribs first, and then I put my seasoning on. So, And if you haven't seen any of my other rib videos, go check them out, man. Um, I go a little bit more in detail on why I do that. So one thing about these is these are a St. Louis-style rib. We got these from Walmart. They were a two-pack. They come like in a frozen cryovac bag. They're cheaper. They're like $18 for two racks of ribs. But the thing is, there's a lot of trimming you have to do on those ribs. Um, these were like a previously frozen rib. Walmart also sells one St. Louis style that's already trimmed up for you. But the one good thing about buying the cryovac, the ones that aren't trimmed yet, is you get a lot of ex extra meat that you can cut off of these ribs. And like what we do, is my wife's gonna take this this is what i trimmed off these ribs that's a lot of meat a lot of you guys are gonna say that's a lot of wasted meat but that's not gonna be wasted that's gonna go into another meal that we're gonna do um, i've mentioned that in some of my other rib cooks too but this is a lot of extra meat off these ribs um and granted when you trim these you don't have to trim that much meat off them if you don't want but we don't waste so the one good thing about buying these with the meat already on it and having to trim it is you get extra meat and you can use it for extra meals if you pay for the just the one that's already trimmed, you're paying more for it, first of all, because of the convenience, and you're not getting that extra meat that you could use on something else. So, you know, it's something to take into account. Like, some people, the one that's already trimmed is going to be more convenient, and it is way more convenient, I will tell you that. Um, but we like, I like trimming these so we can have extra meat to do other stuff with. So, anyways, enough about that, guys. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of this extra rub. I'm going to put a little bit more rub on here before I put them on the grill. Um, one thing I love about this is a metal container. I don't get sponsored by Traeger, just so everybody knows. I just I like to buy different stuff. So, but this is like a metal, just a metal container here, and uh, it's got like a little. What I liked about it was you got like the the mouth here where you can spread it. You know, um, kind of a dispersal. Type. I don't know what they call this, man. I don't know what this this mouth's called, but. You know where you can disperse your stuff you're not just pouring a whole bunch of seasoning they have that side over here too where you can do that but i like this little shaker thing where you can actually control how much you're putting on your ribs a little bit better so let's go ahead and put some on here i'm not gonna put a whole lot because i've already put a bunch on here but these ribs are a little moist from being in the fridge and some of that seasoning has kind of rubbed off a little bit so we're just gonna Put a little bit more on here. I think this is going to be amazing, guys. Um, just love some good ribs. A great meal for, you know, really any time, but really great for special occasions like Father's Day and Mother's Day. We did these for Mother's Day, too. My wife loves these ribs, and that's what I wanted. So we both love these ribs that much that we were willing to do them on Mother's and Father's Day. So... We'll probably do a side. You know, we got some vegetables to go with this. We might do like some macaroni or something to go with this later too. So let's go ahead and get these things on. Um, I kinda wanna show you guys what's going on in here. I got a water pan. I don't always use a water pan. Sometimes I just spritz, but the water pan seems to work really well in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in there. My little thermometer is going off here. Let's go ahead and fits on there perfect man look at these Woo, man these are gonna be some good ribs what we'll do is we'll let those go i'll probably let them go an hour and a half and then i'll probably flip them turn them around get the other side of these ribs kind of towards the heat you know just kind of rotate them get get even heat on both sides so that's all I got right now, guys. Man, we're gonna we're gonna let these cook. Like I said, these are gonna go three hours, but probably at the hour and a half mark, we'll come back and we'll show you guys what they're looking like. Thanks, guys, for being here, and I hope you hang in there. Oh man, those are looking good. We've been holding steady at about 240. Um, 
my thermometer keeps going off because it's saying I'm below where I need to be on my cook temp. So that's why you guys hear that. What I'm gonna do here, man, is I'm just gonna flip these. That color is getting really good, though. That's that's what you want to see right there. Actually, already getting some pullback too. That's really good. We want to see that pullback. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try to. back I think we're good right there we're about right here on our snake water pan looks like it's doing pretty good I might spritz these a little bit they're looking a little dry so I'm probably gonna put me a little water bottle or something together with some apple cider vinegar in it and just spritz them put get a little bit of liquid on there so they don't dry out on us but we've only got like another hour left until we wrap anyway so um, I'm not going to come back to do the spritzing with you guys. I'm just going to do that on my own. But um, next time you guys see me, I'll come back and do the wrap on them. And uh, we'll be in the second part of this cook on the two-hour part of this cook, which is going from the three, two, one to the two-hour part. And, uh, yeah, that's when I'll see you guys next. So I hope you all hang around. We'll see you all in a little bit. All right, guys. So we done pulled. We've done done about our three hours on this three, two, one. So our first three hours is done. Um, this is what the color looks like, man. This color looks amazing on here. This is what we're looking for, man. We want this good color on here. So that good mahogany colors on there. I want you guys to see this too. Like you can start to see the, the pullback on these bones. We're not quite there yet, obviously. We still have a ways to go on this cook, but you can start to see the pullback. That's what you want to see. You want to start seeing a little bit of pullback already on them bones. But when you get it wrapped up in this foil, you'll it'll start pulling them back more. But um, right now, man, I'm just going to put me some honey down. Real simple, man. If you look at YouTube, uh, anywhere on YouTube about ribs, most of the guys that wrap, this is what they do. They use honey, butter, and brown sugar. Uh, real simple, but it's delicious, man. I mean, just a really good way to do these ribs. Gives them a, a sweet element. Um, I love doing my ribs like this. In fact, I don't do them really any other way. They come, they come out so stinking good like this. This is the way to go, man. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer some of this down here. This wind's picking up out here. Um, and I'm gonna put some on top of the ribs as well. There's no method, man. You can do it just in the foil if you want. I've, done, I've said this on my videos before. You can do it on, on just on the foil or you can do it right over the top of your ribs. I do it kind of both sometimes. Sometimes I'll just put it in the foil though. Just depends. We like a, a good sweet rib. Got a little sweet element to it, so. I'm going to take a little bit more of this brown sugar. I'm not going to go horribly crazy, but I'm going to put some on the top. That's going to be so good. Let's put a little bit extra. All right, and then I got some cubed butter. Now, a lot of guys, they use parquet. Um, and that's good to have because it's in a squeeze bottle. But if you just got this regular butter, uh, stick butter, it'll work too. Works just as good. I haven't noticed a major difference with it, using the parquet and just using this or vice versa. You know, it's uh comes out the same in my opinion. All right, we'll use the rest of that butter on our next rack. So all I'm gonna do, move this over, and I'm gonna wrap these up. color on these I'm really impressed with so far they look so good and see my foil is not big enough so I, I got me two pieces of foil here because I knew I would need another another piece of foil if you get this foil I would get the wider foil I didn't get the wider foil this time so you can wrap the, the whole piece of foil around your ribs. This will work. Definitely will work. And as you guys can see on this rack, look at this rack. These are pulling back real nice. Um, closer to the fire. Uh, let me go ahead and... You guys, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm doing this all out here on my Weber Performer Deluxe, this table. Um, really love this table, man. It's really convenient. I can do it all right here. This 
that's another reason I really like this grill. And most of you guys will probably say, well, that's not that big a deal. A table's not that big a deal. And it's, it, it's to some people it's not. Um, to me, it's a really cool feature to have on a grill though. Okay, we got that rack and we'll do the same thing. Y'all hear my thermometer going off there. That's because it's telling me that my grill's been opened and my temp is down. I have my temp set at a certain degree range and it's uh, going off because it's telling me it's a little too low. So definitely suggest you get a probe if you're gonna do these ribs or any kind of meat on your Weber kettle. Makes your life easier. You can't always go off that dome thermometer. It just doesn't doesn't really give you an accurate reading a lot of times. So I suggest you get definitely get another thermometer. Let's go ahead and put this butter in here. We're not gonna waste any of it. Put some down here. Let's put a little bit more brown sugar. And we're gonna put some more honey. I don't ever think you can put too much honey, but if you don't really like a sweet rib, that little sweetness element to your rib, then I wouldn't put a lot. We like it that way, so. And we'll get these wrapped up. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna get this wrapped up. I'm gonna get it put back on the grill. I'm not gonna keep going on with this because I've done this in previous videos. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've, I do this in every rib cook. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go off camera, I'll get this back on and we'll come back to you guys Probably when we're getting ready to put them on, uh, when we take them out of the wrap, and we'll put them back on for that one hour, and then that'll be it. And then I'll pull them, and that'll be the complete video. So, see y'all in a little bit. All right, guys, just wanted to come back to you real quick, keep this short and sweet. Um, we pulled these out of the foil, and this is what we got right now. Man, you see that huge pullback on the bone there. Um, looks really good. Looks really good. A little bit more pullback than I thought I was gonna get right here, but I mean, I, they're gonna be really tender. Um, nothing wrong with that. I, I prefer a firmer rib, but that's okay, man. That, that tenderness, that's gonna be all right. They're, gonna, they're still gonna be some really good ribs. Um, and then I made some sauce. So basically the sauce, there, there was some juice that rendered off in that foil. And I poured it out of the foil and I put it in this bowl and I added a little bit of barbecue sauce. It was some Heinz Kansas City style barbecue sauce. It comes in a squirt bottle. You guys might know what I'm talking about. You get it at the grocery store. It's just something simple. Just I squirted a little bit, a little bit of that in here with that and I mixed it up to give it a little bit thicker consistency. And I'm going to I'm gonna glaze my wings, or not my wings, but my ribs with this in just a minute. I got wings on my mind, guys. Um... I got my Pyrex there ready to go whenever I get done pulling these ribs off. But I'm going to probably glaze these um, probably in about 15 minutes. They've already been on for about 15. Um, I usually glaze about the last, last 30 minutes of my cook. So um, we'll glaze them up, and that'll be it, guys. And I'll get them inside. I'll let them rest, and we'll show you guys the finished product. I appreciate you guys hanging in there if you've hung in there this far. So see y'all in a few. All right guys, so uh, here's the two racks and they're done. Um, as you can see, we got some major pullback on these bones. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, these are gonna be super tender, like fall off the bone tender. If you don't like super fall off the bone tender, I probably shouldn't have let them go as long in the foil. Um, they were already getting pulled back on there the first three hours. And that's probably what I could have done is just not went as long. So if you do these, just kind of, you might want to check them when they're in the foil because um, these are just going to probably be fall off the bone. I don't love fall off the bone, um, but they're still good. I mean, they're, you know, they're still good. My wife loves fall off the bone, so um, some people do like, love fall off the bone. So I think they're still going to be really good. I mean, let's go ahead and cut into these things and see, see what we got here. Looks really good. Look at that top, looks really good. That's a good looking rib. You can see the smoke ring in there, guys. 
Looks delicious. I'm gonna cut a few of these off and put them on a plate and show you guys what we got. We got some sides to go with this today. Another good looking rib right there. Love that glaze. I mean, if you guys don't like glaze or that heavy glaze, we like heavy glaze on ours. So I get a lot of guys that comment on my YouTube videos sometimes like, oh man, that was, those look really sticky. Those look really wet. wet. Well, that's because I like them that way. If you don't like them that way, then by all means, don't put this sauce on there. Just keep a dry rub on there. That's all you got to do. Um, we just prefer them this way. We like that, that sauce on there. That stickiness, we like that. You can see it falling off the bone now. All right, guys, I'm not going to cut the other rack because, I mean, you get the idea. They're the same kind of ribs. Um, they look really good, man. Um, this was, in my opinion, they came out really good. Let me taste them and tell you guys what they taste like. They're good. That Traeger seasoning is really good. That apple honey rub we used. Super delicious, guys. This is what we're looking at for dinner. We got some potato salad, some, some veggies my wife did. And I did the meat, so that's what I like to do. That's, that's what I do around here, so. My wife does sides, I do the meat, so. Really good, man. I mean, they came out great. You know, it's, it's just like a lot of the rib cooks I do on this channel. They came out amazing. Uh, I love ribs, guys. I used to not love ribs before I got this Weber kettle. I love ribs now. Like, I would do ribs all the time if I could. Um, they're just so good. They come out so good on this kettle. If you're thinking about this kettle or you're thinking about the, the Weber at all, you can't go wrong with these ribs. Um, I've got a Kamado Joe does great ribs too. I've got a Pellet Grill does great ribs too. So, but something about this Weber just gives it that flavor. It's it's a different element of flavor. I don't know. I can't explain it. But they just get to me. They get more smoky. They have more of a smoky flavor. So, well, guys, that's all I got, man. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everybody. All the dads out there that every day are there for their kids and for their family. I appreciate you. I'm sure your kids appreciate you. Your families appreciate you. Um, for the moms out there doing the dual thing that have to play the, the dad, kudos to you because that's tough. Never been in that situation, but kudos to you guys for doing that every day, what you do for your kids and for your family. So um, this was just a simple Father's Day rib cook today. A lot of you are going to say, oh, it's just a simple rib cook. You've done a lot of those. I have, but this was a Father's Day special. So I want to bring this on Father's Day. I felt Felt blessed enough to be able to do that. My wife loves my ribs anyway, and it just gave me an excuse to cook ribs today, guys. So if you haven't checked me out on Instagram, check me out on Instagram. Check me out on Facebook at T-Ways Barbecue Treats. I love to, to hear from you on those forums, on those social media outlets. I love hearing from my audience. Let me know what, how I did on this cook. Do you guys think I did good? Do you, do you think it was a mediocre cook? You know, tell me what you think, guys. I mean, uh, if you're new to barbecue, let me know you're new to barbecue. Um, if you've got great techniques that you've used before on these ribs on the Weber, let me know. Talk to me, guys. I'm by no means am I a perfectionist. I'm not. I don't pretend to be on these videos. Um, so just just want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. I'm always coming out with new videos. I love doing this. We're constantly coming out. Sometimes, like I said, it's the same kind of food, but we might do a little different variation with seasonings and stuff. So today we tried some Traeger seasoning. I thought it was really good. And again, that was that Traeger apple uh, honey rub. So appreciate you guys. Without further ado, I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to dig into this because I'm hungry, boy, and it looks good. So happy Father's Day again, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned for my next video. It'll be up here somewhere. See you guys later.